Thank you for calling helicopter support. This is Phil. How can I help you? <clears throat> that could have been the first thing that you heard if you called customer service at Helicopter Support Inc. way back in probably around 2008. And today on the Pig Roach Files we are going to have a look back into the past and see if we can't find out what really happened to a son and his father who both sadly lost their jobs and how much of the story told by Philip Burnell was actually that just a story so welcome back to another episode of the Pig Roach Files see this video was released on What's September 30th, uh, 2010. And, um, it was the day Phil the lost video his video job. He was laid off um, from Helicopter be Support Inc. Where, um, where he was right a um, constant yeah, really improvement team member. He was doing say. Sigma 6, um, well basically, or 6 Sigma, um, 5S, you know, years, in many years, terms have been, this has been my side thing, brought so up my hobby, to my, explain know, what constant I improvement for, means you know, and does. Time, um, I love video games, so I do video but game the issue with this, game reviews, things like that. Um, and the issue with a lot well, of DSP's history, is, this, today, is that it's very the confusing so these days. Because for some reason... The pig roach this means a lot of things. keeps on changing um, some the story. Good, some bad. I see both sides of every situation. And, and, and no, it's not the story of his back injury. But I'm sure that will play a role in this tale. And I want to educate you guys on what constant improvement management is. First, it was invented by Henry Ford when he started to manufacture his cars. And then it was perfected by the people over at Toyota. And I mean perfected, like there is an actual classroom college type coursework put on by Toyota of Japan to educate other people in industrial areas of how to implement th their process of constant improvement so that you too can improve the product and your workforce all at the same time while experiencing massive gains. The overall issue though is when your constant improvement team falters if they do not function properly there is no reason to have them on board anymore and they are let go now I was watching one of Dark Dave's mirror streams the other day when Agent Mr. Huff decided to pop in and educate some of us, letting us know that Phil's CI responsibilities match those of his father's listed here on LinkedIn. Daddy Dave Burnell here was the head of the CI team while well, Phil worked in customer service. So how did Phil make the leap to CI? Phil claims that he was getting all of the good noodle stars at work and that things were going very well. 
But what if that wasn't the case? What if what actually was going on was that Phil's disgusting behavior, his burping, his snorting, in his constant habit of trying to one-up other people's stories, caught up to him. And his, his customer service lead probably didn't want him on that team any longer. Probably too many complaints about somebody burping into their ear, crunching a water bottle into the phone receiver, or snorting after each sentence. So, what were they going to do with Phil at that point? They could have let him go and fired him, or being his dad's team probably needed another member. Well, that's it. There's the solution. You pass the son over to the father's team. Just to save his ass. So, the guess is that Daddy Dave came in with the save and pulled Phil into his CI team to make sure his son didn't get fired. After the introduction to the CI team and gaining his certs that he was so proud of that he put on them onto the wall in his Connecticut condo, Phil probably didn't do a damn thing for the company. He claims he set up projects. He claims that he changed around the processes in the warehouse. I mean, just take a look at this. Ended up finally getting a job after the Best Buy debacle at a place called Helicopter Support Incorporated. This was in also in uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Actually, I take that back. I think Helicopter Support was just over the Trumbull line. So they were considered Trumbull, not Bridgeport. Okay? And uh, this job was so different than anything I had done. Customer service. So you're the face of the company to the customer. Customers would come to, to me and say, Phil, I have a helicopter and I operate it myself, but this particular part broke. My mechanic told me this part broke. What can you do for me? And I would go out there and look, do any companies have the part available? Do we maybe have the part available? Because we had a huge inventory of, of helicopter parts in our inventory. If it was a really expensive part, like a helicopter blade, that costs so much money to make that no, no one wants to buy a new one. We had an actual shop where people worked on helicopter parts and blades and stuff like that, where we would talk to them, gee, do you have a refurb? Do you have something available that we could get this customer right away as, as, a, as a, in, a more inexpensive way to get them flying again? And that was my job. I was basically the go-between between customers and our company finding parts for people and getting those parts out to the operators. What ended up happening was that three years into me being at this job, which I got nothing but great ratings, promotions, all kinds of great stuff, the economy turned. And when the economy turned, um, unfortunately, what ended up happening was that the company had year record increase. Oh, I, I'm doing it the wrong direction. Or am, no, I was doing it the right direction. Record increase, record increase, record increase sales, record increase sales, and then it plateaued. And then it went... <laughs> because no one could afford to operate a helicopter anymore because the economy had turned in the United States. So this company that at one point when I started working there was prosperous record year, record year, after three years of me being there started to tank. Unfortunately, during that period of time, I decided to buy this condo. So finally, after moving back in with my parents for like three years, I moved back out again and moved into this condo into the summer of 2009. And as you guys know, it was that during that period of time that I started doing YouTube as a hobby. I also hurt my back, or didn't really hurt it, but I found out about the severely herniated disc in my lower back. And found out that I couldn't do physical stuff anymore, like play football or anything like that. So I ended up doing a lot more less physical activities like gaming a hell of a lot more. So I buy this place in 2009 and, you know, start doing my thing with YouTube and everything in it. In fact, I still remember when I had the office job... When Batman Arkham uh, Asylum came out, I actually took the day off of work. 
I took two days, actually, off of work just to play Batman Arkham Asylum. Because I knew it was going to be great. And you know what? I don't regret it at all. Even though they were my vacation days and I used them to play games, it was worth it. That game was great. The playthrough did well. You know what I mean? It was that kind of stuff that got me notoriety on YouTube back then. So, you know, my hobby is booming. Everything at work is going well. People are saying, I'm getting all these great evaluations. Everything's saying, you're doing great, above and beyond. In fact, at this point, they started grooming me at this job around 2009 to be a lead in continuous improvement. And what that means is that they had this program where they were teaching people to become not these, these employees of customer support anymore, but to be advanced in the, in the, the business. <clears throat> what you would do, you would look at a process. So let's say the repair process to repair a part. At the company and you would say what's step one step two step three all the way till the end of the process where the, the maybe the part comes into the building to when it leaves the building goes to the customer you would map out the process you would time each step you would find out at what points do we have problems in our process right what when do we have problems and we mark them off and it was your job to eliminate those problems or cut them down or revamp the process to save time and money and i became trained to do this i actually have a certification on the wall in my bedroom ACE, ACE, Achieving Competitive Excellence, where I became a, considered an associate. It's the, the first major level of achievement in training for it. I ran events. I was in charge of completely redesigning the repairs process in our building from start to finish. And I did it. I, I mapped it out. I did this whole thing. No one else did stuff like this. I was the only person who was doing stuff like this because they trusted me to do it. So I revamped the whole process. We revamped the whole computer system and all this, right? So all this was happening between 2009-2010 as a, I was paired with doing my YouTube hobby here at home. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden in the middle of 2010, basically here's what happened. Like I said, record. all of a sudden they started pissing money away. They were making no money anymore, this company, because the economy turned. They decided they were going to do a reorganization of the company. Let me tell you something. If you work for a company that's doing a reorganization, you're up shit's creek. Because what that means is that they are failing and they need to reorganize and screw people over and leave, kick people out and do stuff real nasty to keep the company afloat. And what happened in this case, they did a reorg where they took me out of this department where I was doing all this great work and they put me in a completely different department. And the management there didn't know who I was, didn't know about my, my skill set, didn't care about ACE at all. They literally didn't care for the fact that I had done all this above and beyond work, had gotten recommendations and achievement awards and everything. The, guy, the management there didn't give a fuck about me and after three months they laid me off. Now, I bet that all he did was just ruin people's days. See, the, the best constant improvement people are those who come in and assist your skilled labor workers into helping them with their day, making their tasks just that much easier. No one likes to be pulled away from their duties to go ahead and paint lines on the floor or to give a deep clean to a certain area. But Phil couldn't do that kind of stuff because he had a bad back. And I'm sure he tried to weasel his way out because his dad knew that he had a bad back. So all Phil did was sit there with his dad, eating donuts, drinking coffee, and coming up with plans for other people to do their work. Now this isn't a slight on Big Daddy Dave. He's earned that time. His LinkedIn resume actually does look well put together. But his Nunnik son decided to go ahead and take up that mantle and thought he was entitled to just sit on his ass all day and get paid. I'm sure after trying to delegate work in the CI team, trying to have production leads in other various supervisors pissed off to all hell just to finish these weird odd fall projects that usually don't have much of a deadline unless if corporate wants that deadline met. I'm sure 
eventually, they had enough of Phil. Leeds would have complained about the situation to the higher-ups. An action against Phil would have been made. So, unable to get his son a different position in that company, where nobody wanted him any longer. Daddy Dave, the, the last thing he could have done to give his child some success in the future. And he had his son laid off. Instead of being fired. See, Phil was able to walk away unemployed, but he got a nice severance package, as he stated, to help ease his transition into a new job. But this is what happened the next day. Oh, what's up everyone? Uh, welcome to the very first uh, match of Super Street Fighter 4 that I have played in about three months. Um, I'm going to do a little mini set here online of gameplay against people. Uh, I am super fucking rusty, so I don't even remember how to play this game. I'm going to start out with Ryu <laughs> to play it a little safe here. It looks like immediately we get a Zangief player. Which actually makes me want to pick the Metsu Shoryuken. It's like a fuck with him. Well, who knows? There might be a laggy geef that's going to rape me. I don't know. <clears throat> Alright. Time to dust the cobwebs off. Time to try to, uh, to get back into shape here. Now I'm going to actually have some time to play this game. I need to basically get back into fighting shape. Always oh, Mecha Geef. I love Mecha Geef. It's laggy. Tried to throw right there, nothing happened. Wow, I couldn't do anything. Nice laggy match. <laughs> A good laggy match to start. Oh, no fucking fierce punch. I block, but okay. I press the button, but okay. <laughs> I definitely didn't attack, but okay. Okay, where's my low kick? Okay. <laughs> I'm blocking. Wow, no EX. I can't even block those EX green hands, it's so laggy. It's definitely delayed like half a second. Okay, <laughs> I released it and it never released. Okay, I did a move. This is ridiculous. I tried to sweep. Oh my god. Oh no, Ultra, you saw me buffer it too. You saw me buffer it, it never fucking came out. Wow, it was a laggy ass smash. I was buffering the Ultra the whole time. He finally jumps, I go to do it, and it fucking doesn't come out. It's so delayed. I guess I should have mashed. <laughs> the original begging video. 
he got onto YouTube, showed the world that he got laid off. And he was a bit confused about the whole situation. However, he claimed that he'd be on his feet rather soon. And that he was looking for another job. But he followed it up the next day. Not by getting a tie on. Not by pulling a, a suit out of the closet to go and try to get another job. Dust off his little framed... ACE paperwork or his constant improvement management certificate off the wall to go and show people that he was worthy of a job. No. Instead, the next day, a playlist showed up onto the original Dark Side Phil channel titled Unemployment Madness. It was a Street Fighter 4 playlist. All he did all day was sit around, whine and moan about how he got laid off and that this was the next best thing for him to do. Sit there, record shitty gameplay into his shitty handheld camera to upload to his shitty fans at the time. Trust me, I was one of them. I felt sorry for Phil, however I thought it was just going to pass. But boy was I wrong. I didn't know at that point that I'd actually be witnessing the birth of the pig roach. It was when he resigned from being employed by companies to being self-employed in trying to make YouTube work for him. And the rest is all history now. Well, who knows at this point. Phil seems to like to change his history, as I'm sure many of you know. And I'm sure most of us are gonna be sitting there watching that retrospective event on Saturday. Be it through Dark Dave's mirrors or LSB's channel. I don't know if the Almighty One is going to go ahead and cover it. But he just might. So prepare for more retconning of these stories. Just like the story of his back. Who knows what happened? We've heard sports injury, car accident, various other things. So we might have to do a little bit of a live investigation on that next week. Because it's interesting to watch somebody who's put up almost 11 years of his life onto the internet try to lie about a situation and change the story that he's told countless times before. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Pig Roach Files. Thank you to everybody who has became a new agent recently. The support and growth here at the DIA has been just fantastic, and I can't thank you guys more. I hope that you have been enjoying the new content. I know that some of it comes out on a bit of a drip feed, but, you know, I work a, a 9 to 5 job, you know, like a sucker. And I'm sure most of you do too. So finding those little brief moments where I can actually sit down and put in some work sometimes can be rare. And I know that a lot of you understand that. I can't wait to hear from you guys in the comments section below. Hopefully you guys can drop some likes 
into this video so that a few more people can get educated and understand the kind of deeper lore of DSP. I also hope that some more of you would like to become agents today by hitting that subscription button. Maybe even turning on the notification bell so you can get, you know, your very own agent alerts. I really appreciated the other day going over to one of Dark Knight Dante's streams and maybe making a poor life choice and Dante bailed me out for it but I was going to have a sip of beer each time Phil died during our let's survive of Fall Gout 3 and boy that would have killed me luckily I had a sip every two deaths too bad Phil died probably about 90 times but I'm a trained professional. I'm used to having to numb the mind in order to surpass the horrible gameplay of DSP. So the link to that stream will be in the description below so you can enjoy watching me slur some words have quite a few good laughs at the pig roach's expense and enjoying some quality time with a good friend like Dante so please go over there to his channel and show him some love too if you haven't done that yet he's a really cool guy and hopefully him and I can get together in the future for either some gameplay or another let's survive maybe next time I won't try to go ahead and go that hard in the paint. Other than that, things here at the DIA could not be better. So, we have you guys to thank for that. Now I'm off to go ahead and get our research center booted and ready to try to sift through this whole retrospective event yet again. It's very taxing on all the agents here to have to try to sit through such a long and boring stream of Phil being sad about friendship lost and mistakes being made. So maybe, maybe one day he can take all of that constant improvement training that he received during his time at Helicopter Support Inc. And maybe he can improve his own streams or his own life. <laughs> Who are we kidding? All he's gonna do is just go ahead and drink some gin and Sprite and call it good. We know he's just not gonna put any effort into it. But I hope you enjoyed everything today. So I'll catch you next time on another episode of The Pig Roach Files.